Hey everyone, my name is Blue and we are back today with some more entitled parents posts. These parents think that the world belongs to them. If you haven't yet, please consider subscribing to the channel. And with that, let's get into it. It's basically my wedding. So this is a story about my sister-in-law's mother that happened just over eight years ago. My sister-in-law brought this up during a family Zoom call to which one of my nieces immediately asked for me to write it up here. It's taken a few days since the call to get it all typed. I've ended up with a monster wall of text, but I tried to cut a lot out of it too. There is a too long didn't read at the bottom too. I hope you all enjoy this piece of family history. Cast for this will be myself, Alice, the sister-in-law, Helen, Alice's mother, our entitled mother, Ron, Alice's husband and my brother, Fred, and George, two of my other brothers. To set the scene, the wedding was set to happen on a farm run by my Aunt Rose. This farm is set up to be photo ready for wedding and events that people wish to have there. It comes with a hefty price tag for a rental and for her gift to Ron and Alice, Aunt Rose donated the venue and the on-site lodge for all of the guests. Her children donated their time to clean and set the venue up. Her husband donated his cooking ability. Other family members provided the ingredients and there wasn't a whole lot for the bride and groom to actually pay for. The wedding dress was made by Alice, her sister, and two of our cousins. The most expensive thing the pair purchased were the rings. Most people would be happy to spend so little for a wedding, but the mother of the bride was a problem from day one. She had to have her say in everything, just no one listened. It wasn't her day, it was Alice's day. She got progressively more angry as the family went with Alice's choices and not her ideas. Alice got to design everything, including the wedding cake. Due to her own allergies, she did not want any coconut on her cake. Pretty straightforward request, right? She had plans for a beautiful naked cake decorated with berries and a very nature-based look. The family adored Alice, but it was very clear that without needing to say anything, we all tuned out Helen and her terrible demands. Alice had ordered sunflowers and an array of orange and yellow roses and other flowers. They arrived before the rehearsal dinner and were put in the walk-in fridge to keep them looking good for the following day. Helen got very emotional when she saw the flowers that night. Fred said he had a bad feeling in his gut when Helen went off just before the rehearsal started. He didn't get to stop her or catch her, but she'd gone into the kitchen and snapped the heads off of the sunflowers. Helen didn't want sunflowers in her daughter's wedding photos. To not stress out the bride or groom, Fred put a text out to the family that had supplied the flowers. He explained that he'd left the rehearsal about six minutes after Helen had and found the sunflowers all beheaded. The family member agreed to replace all of them and come over extra early before the wedding with the needed flowers. She also requested that he save the sunflower heads and they could do something with the beheaded ones on the dining tables for the reception. Crisis one averted. However, while Fred was dealing with the sunflowers, I was dealing with another crisis altogether. Helen was standing off to the side of the event after finishing the meal. She was on the phone and like my brother, I found a feeling of wrongness in my gut. So I wandered to listen in. She was talking to her husband, Alice's stepfather on the phone. She was saying what a great surprise this would be for Alice and how excited Alice would be to see her stepfather. I stepped into Helen's space and told her point blank, if that man showed up, he would be leaving with more holes than God intended. Helen scoffed off the threat until she saw the look in my eyes. 
She told her husband she would call him back before hanging up. She told me that she could invite her husband. After all, it was thanks to him Alice even met her future husband. She would be so thrilled to have him walk her down the aisle instead of Alice's own father. It was only right, after all. Who wouldn't want someone who abused them so badly they ran away and got rescued by a stranger at their wedding? I looked over my shoulder and made eye contact with George. He sensed the brewing trouble and responded in the way only George ever responds with. He brought her a fruity, sweet drink and asked if there was a problem. She drank down the drink as she told him her woes of how I was so cruel to her. He patted her arm and took her off to the side where he proceeded to keep her glass very full. I went and warned my uncle to shut the gate prior to the wedding, and when he found out what was going on, he insisted he would keep one of his sons by the front gate just in case. The party was winding down as the bride and groom separated for the evening. George kept filling up the woman's glass, talking to her as if he was the most sympathetic person to her woes. The drunker Helen got, the more she spilled. She admitted about the sunflowers because they were such an ugly flower and her daughter didn't know better. However, around drink four, she admitted that she'd fixed the stupid cake she'd seen in the fridge. George acted like he hated the cake as well to get out what he could from her as he found out this woman had wanted coconut cake. The thing her daughter was allergic to. Badly allergic to. Turned out, she had bought a few tubs of coconut frosting from the store and spread it over the base cake layer. It was around 3 a.m. when this revelation came out. George kept piling her with drinks as he led her towards the room she was staying in. He told the family via a text to check the cake immediately. Once he got her into bed with the plan to let her just sleep through the morning wedding, she blabbed about how bland the food had looked and she'd made it all better. Then she passed out without further explanation. All of the food was being inspected by the family as Aunt Rose, her husband, and kids set to work with the siblings to fix everything. The cake needed to be remade. The poorly spread coconut frosting had completely ruined the cake. Family members were woken up while the bride, groom, and wedding party were left alone to sleep. George said he would keep an eye on Helen and fix things with her husband. He was going to send the man somewhere completely different from the wedding venue. The family came together with 12 cars leaving the ranch to go home for various replacements. There was a berry hunt at 4 in the morning, new fish, new bread being made, a new order of steaks being tenderized and marinated along with a dozen other things. One of my cousins was digging up new sweet potatoes while his wife and son gathered fresh eggs. Cars came and went all night. I told Alice her mother was sleeping off a hangover while she was getting dressed for the day, and she accepted it rather quickly. She had been told by some of her family that she had to invite her. As she tugged her stockings up, she told me she couldn't believe her wedding was here. She was getting to marry her Prince Charming in Ron, and she was trying not to cry before getting her makeup done. Helen missed the wedding despite her sister and her other daughter trying to wake her up for it. I'm glad to say Alice was in the dark about what happened on her wedding day until she came back from her honeymoon. Who told her what Helen had done? Why? Helen herself. Helen screamed at her daughter the first day they returned from the honeymoon and told her how disappointed she was with the wedding she slept through. She wanted Alice to dress in her wedding dress and take photographs with her mother and her stepfather. 
Ron put a stop to that real fast. No way was her stepfather ever coming near her again. Helen was blocked, and Alice tried to figure out what all had happened at the event in those wee morning hours. We told her, with everyone coming forward with what they had done while the couple slept and rested for their wedding day. Alice thanked us all, and Ron told everyone at the next family get-together that she couldn't understand how we'd been so calm about it. Aunt Rose told her that in a crisis you can't lose focus. Make a plan, follow through, and things will work out all right. Alice took that advice to heart. She's a wedding planner now, and she is a stone wall for brides against their mothers or any influence beside the husband. It is their day, and that's it. Everyone else can shut up and listen to the bride and groom. Hope you all enjoyed. What an insane story. Luckily, Helen can't handle a hangover, or that would have been even worse. And that's all the time we have for these entitled parent stories today. If you liked any of the stories, make sure to click that like button. And if you haven't yet, subscribe so you don't miss out on any more stories. Thanks for listening, everyone. Catch you later.